I have the worst go. Uh, I have uh, 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 coffee makers. I can't stand them things. Back when I was scrapping, I always t took them in, you know, and took them apart and everything. But they were a pain in the butt to take apart. You didn't get much out of them. But also, to be using them things. <sighs> Seems like one morning when you wake up and you really want that cup of coffee and you go in there and you get it all prepped up and everything and turn it on and the dang thing don't work. <laughs> They're a pain in the butt. Used to, they were more reliable than they are now. But, but of course, now you can buy the real expensive ones and I guess maybe, maybe you won't have those problems. Uh, we got a, uh, uh, what do they call it? A Keurig, Keurig or something. Uh, we have a, the coffee maker took a dump. And I drink Folgers Colombian. But now, we have a, how do you pronounce it, Keurig. And I have about 10 boxes of these here. A Keurig. There's 24 to a box. Somebody gave us these. I can't remember who it was. And we have a couple other thoughts that my daughter bought. So I guess I'm trouble. I don't like these because it just makes a cup. I like to make a pot. But it says the original donut shop, shop coffee, regular medium roast coffee. I reckon in the morning I'll be trying these. But it is what it is. You know, uh, when I was about eight years old, there was a supermarket down the street and it was a real busy road. It was Princess Anne Highway, and I had to cross the railroad tracks and the intersection. And then open air market was on the, right there on the corner. Why in the world do I start yawning when I do this? I don't know. And Mama used to send me down there uh, to get stuff, and they had a charge account there. And I don't know if I understood what a charge account was, or no, I don't know. All I know is if you went in there and you charged it, you didn't have to have any money. <laughs> And one day she sent me down there for, I don't know what it was. And I got that and I seen this toy. It was some kind of a puppet. I can't remember what they called it. 
And I seen that thing and I really liked it. <laughs> and I charged it. <laughs> and when I got back to the house, something told me they weren't going to like that idea of me doing that. But later on that night, she come in my bedroom and I was sitting there playing with that toy. And I think it was like a dollar. I don't, I can't remember. But she come in there and she seen me with that toy. Where did you get that? I got it at the store, mama. <laughs> and then it hit her did you charge that I, <laughs> I said yeah I got my little butt spanked that night and I had to take it back to the store the next day. And they took it back. They shouldn't have let me been charging toys. They, they, the account was for groceries. <laughs> I didn't charge nothing no more than what she told me to charge after that. <laughs> but I sure did like that toy. <laughs> It was some kind of a puppet, and it stood on a board, and you bounced the board, and the puppet would jiggle around and dance. <laughs> oh, my goodness. And one time, you know, a quart of milk back then was like a quarter. A loaf of bread was 12 cents. Oh. Uh, <laughs> and, but she sent me to the store to get a loaf of bread. I charged it. And as I was coming to the street and there at the intersection I had to cross it and everything and there was a school bus stopped there at the red light and there was a bunch of kids standing in the bus you know and they looking out the window and they was hollering at me and stuff like that and I was taking that loaf of bread I was throwing it up in the air and catching it. They got a charge out of that, you know, and I'd throw it up and catch it, and I'd get it, and then I'd squash it like in a quarry. <laughs> and then I'd pitch it up in the air again. <laughs> Guess what? That got me another switching when I got home. <laughs> that bread was destroyed. <laughs> Oh my gosh. And another time I had to get several items and I had them in a little it's in a paper bag and I got to the street and the cars and everything was stopped at the red light. So I run, <laughs> I, <laughs> it wasn't funny at the time, I got hit by a car. I run between two vehicles, one was a little panel like truck, you know, and, and a car and I run between them. I didn't do it at the corner, I run between the vehicles that were stopped and there was another lane there and there was cars coming there and I run between them. They didn't see me and the car hit me. 
And when it hit me, I went sliding down the street with my groceries. I didn't let go of the groceries. And I slid down that street, scared me to death. And I got up, grabbed them groceries, and started running to the house, which is about two or three blocks. And I mean, I run all the way to the house run in the back door and throw them groceries down and run into my bed room <laughs> and got under the covers. <laughs> I wasn't hurt. I don't think I was. I wasn't hurt. But the guy in the car that hit me, he followed me home and he was trying to get me to stop. And he followed me all the way to the house. And then he went, got parked and went banging on the door and said, a little boy, I hit a little boy and he run in his house. <laughs> and they went in there and got me out. <laughs> and they didn't, and normally uh, the right thing to have been to do would have been to have took me to the hospital and see if anything was wrong. <laughs> But, <clears throat> I'm yawning again, but that poor old man, he was just petrified that he hit that kid. <laughs> I run, I, I mean, I was lickety split down that highway. <laughs> oh my gosh, that, it was about two or three blocks and it was a real busy highway, Princess Anne Highway. <laughs> That's when we lived in Broad Creek Village, 1331 North Woodlawn Avenue. <laughs> and that poor man, that was probably in 47 or 48. And we didn't leave there till 1951 when Mom and Daddy split up and Mama took off to Florida and dropped us off at Grandma's in Roanoke Rapids, North Carolina. This was in Virginia. And that man, every, every few months, he had stopped by the house to make sure I was okay. And he did that right up to the time we left the country. <laughs> I don't know why I run, you know. And, and I was crying, you know. I, I think I was like eight. I'm not sure. You know, you don't send your kids off like that nowadays at all. But back then, nobody thought nothing about it. And I remember in Rona, uh, in, 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 Rona, in, <laughs> in Broad Creek Village when we lived there, Sometimes a kid would go missing and they had this car that went around that had a loud speaker on the top. And if a kid went missing, they'd be going around the whole village announcing about a kid missing so-and-so and his name so-and-so or her name so-and-so till they found her. And this was a government housing thing, and it was built mainly for people that worked at the shipyard back during the war, you know, and building ships, and that's mainly, and Navy personnel and stuff, that's what lived there. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm... It busted my little skinny butt, <laughs> and I was skinny. I was I was skinny. I was skinny in 1962 and 63 when I got out of the army, and 64 when I got married. I was skinny, but boy, that went away pretty quick.
I didn't think too much about it when I got up to around 180. And I thought that was the perfect weight. And I always wanted to be heavier and stockier and everything, you know. Then when I got up to 200, didn't think much about it then. But when I hit 230, I was getting El Chubbo. <laughs> but those were the good years for me, you know. Uh, I suppose I was upset somewhat or traumatized somewhat about when mom and daddy split up and mama disappeared for three years and uh but I didn't I don't I can't remember thinking about it much or anything but as I got older it's it started bothering me. And uh, well, I ain't going down that rabbit hole right now. I don't feel like it. But I was a mischievous little devil, you know? And you know something else I've done? This was after we found Mama and I was living with Mama and my stepdad and all that stuff. And I had a real sweet tooth. And I loved it when she opened up a can of peaches or a can of fruit cocktail or something like that. And I loved getting that, drinking that juice out of there and stuff. And I got this I got this habit of taking when there wasn't nobody around and take the end of a can up and stick a little hole. I would go down at the bottom of the can, peel the label back a little bit, and punch a hole in the side of that can at the bottom and suck all that juice out of there. <laughs> Suck all that juice out of there. <laughs> and then stick the label back over the hole and put it back up on the shelf. Well, Mama started getting open cans of peaches or cans of fruit cocktail, and they would be bad. They had rotted or something you know she knew something was wrong but she couldn't figure it out and she was taking them back to the grocery store every time she got a bad can she'd take it back to the grocery store and they'd replace it well pretty soon they got suspicious said something's wrong here and one time when Mama took a can down there, it was bad again, to Setzer's Food Store, that was like a little supermarket. Took it back down there and left them like, they said, something's fishy here. And they got to looking at it, and they found that little hole in that thing. And they said, well, somebody stuck a hole in here. And uh, at first, Mama said, well, why would somebody do that? <laughs> it didn't take them too long to figure out somebody at the house was sticking a hole in there and getting the juice out. And... <laughs> I fessed up, and I knew when I fessed up to it, <laughs> I was going to get my little butt switched. <laughs> and I did. <laughs> and I did. Um, <sighs> those weren't happy 
times when I got Swiss about something, but it's funny as crap, the stuff that I did. I even, I, <laughs> I was looking at something about how they was making these airplanes, the right button, and it looked like this put together with sticks and stuff and everything. And I got this wild hair <laughs> thinking I could make me a airplane frame and I hadn't figured out how I'd make it go yet but I, I could make the wings and all that stuff and I started cobbling up something style of sticks of wood and everything <laughs> and I went in the linen closet in the house and I got a bunch of mama's sheets <laughs> bed sheets and I started tacking them to that frame and everything. <laughs> and <laughs> and the landlord come by and said, we've been getting complaints. One of your kids has built some kind of contraption out there and it's blocking the blocking the alleyway. <laughs> Mom, Mama and Bob went out there. <laughs> and, that, and they're like, what the hell is that? <laughs> I was just playing. <laughs> then she got to looking, is that my sheets? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's the seats. <laughs> Here come another switching boy. But this time she overreacted. She chased me back in the house. And we didn't have like a clothes dryer or anything, you know. We had a wash, a ringer type washing machine. And she had clotheslines out on the back porch. The back porch was really big and it was on the second floor. And she had a bunch of clothes and sheets and stuff hanging on that line drying and I run up there. And this time I was determined she wasn't gonna switch me. And that woman, she picked up a frying pan. And I was going in between the clothes and stuff and she was running after me and I run down one end and she was down at the other end and she cold cocked me on the top of my head with that frying pan. I still got a knot on my head. Uh, that that could have caused me some kind of severe injury. It, it might have. I don't know. But I still got a knot up there and every once in a while my wife over the years she'd be rubbing my head if I had a headache or something and she'd feel that knot and she'd get so ticked off about that. And mama shouldn't hit me with the frying pan. The switches was one thing, but frying, and I mean it knocked a crap. It put me on the ground. <laughs> oh, Lord. And, but I always got blamed for anything that got wrong that happened in the house, if they didn't know who did it. And uh, I had one brother, he was bad about going in mama's pocketbook and snitching money, not much, you know, like a dollar or something. And I would get blamed for it. And I didn't know who it was. And one after we got on up in years, he said, you know, you got blamed. I was taking money out of mama's pocketbook and you got blamed for it. And I said, and well, why didn't you fess up? And he said, why? I said, because I was getting blamed for it. 
But he's the one that was in the army and 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 in Vietnam and wounded and all that stuff, and he's dead now. But that was my baby brother. <laughs> but I always got blind everything, everything. Even when Michael stuck started a fire, they had a mouse hole in the closet down that floor, and Michael stuck some papers and stuff down there and set it on fire. Me and Carolyn were supposed to be watching the kids, but we weren't. We were out playing out there on the street and stuff. We was about a block from the house and we seen the fire trucks go by. I got to blame for that, even though they knew I didn't do it. But I just should have been watching, watching Michael. And even to this day, if I ever see Michael, and I mention that, it wasn't me, it was Joe. Well, it was Michael. It wasn't Joe. <laughs> that was a bunch of kids. But at, when Mama left us in 1951, she left me, Carolyn, and George at grandmother's. And then her and Bob, took off and went to Florida with Michael and Joe. And none of us ever lived again as a family, you know, with Mama. There was at one point, it was, uh, it was me, Carolyn, Joe, and Michael. George was at Aunt Rose and Mace. He never went to live with Mama after that. And, we went and lived it, but it didn't last. We always wound up going back to North Carolina or Virginia. But, uh, <sighs> stinking memory. Sometimes they're good, sometimes they're bad. <laughs> but I, I was. I did a lot of stuff. I, I was really mischievous. I wasn't like bad, bad, you know. Uh, I mean, I'd go out there just beyond our backyard. There was a big ditch. The one I was telling y'all about one time, we'd see who could pee the feathers to cross the ditch, and I did stuff like that climbed up a persimmon tree and they had to come get me down and all that the fire department did <laughs> i was trying to impress the girl <laughs> and wound up i got up there all right but i got i got scared and some of the kids down there walked and finally i wound up almost crying but y'all go get my mama <laughs> <laughs> what an embarrassing thing that was. I was trying to impress Betty Gay. <laughs> trying to impress Betty Gay. And I wound up looking like a little crybaby. <laughs> got a lot, got a lot, got a lot, lot of problems out there. Jumped in the box car on a train that was sitting still on the track. And then it started moving and then I was afraid to jump off and uh, it went a couple of miles down the track before it finally stopped. There was an engine or something on it, somewhere, somewhere down, it was a whole long train. Jumped off and we started running back home. We thought we was running back home, but what we was doing, we got disoriented and instead of running back towards the house, we was running away from the house. Till we figured out we went the wrong way. And we had to turn around. I guess it was four miles back to the house. <laughs> Didn't jump in no empty box cars again after that. <laughs> oh my goodness. 
I need some cold water and I don't have any. I got some lukewarm coffee. I guess I'll be doing live streaming tonight, which is be Sunday night at seven o'clock. And I still can't get my two buddy to work on my channel. And I don't know what I'm gonna do about it. I can't figure out what I'm doing wrong and they can't help me. So I'm gonna try again Monday. But I'm gonna have to keep the phone handy and them handy to help me because they're gonna send codes to make sure it's me they're talking to and all that crap. So I don't, I don't know. This is this new computer, you know, so it's just, it is what it is. <laughs> uh, I've had a pretty comical life at times. At times. Oh, uh, <laughs> Oh my goodness. All right, guys. I. <laughs> Whew. Whew. Man. What makes me yawn so much? And it don't, I don't start that till I get on, on the bit, making a video or something or talking on the camera. Oh. I don't, another thing about that happened when we lived in Broad Creek Village. <clears throat> about a mile from the house there was kind of like a park and they was having a fishing there's a big old pond out there and they was having some kind of fishing exhibit or something and for some reason this grown man gave me a fishing lure. It was like a shaped like a fish and it had hooks hanging on the back, hooks hanging on the front. <laughs> and I was proud as fun. I don't know what I was gonna do with it. I don't know why he gave it to me. But he gave it to me. And that night at the house <laughs> I was showing daddy and I was showing it and shaking it you know and he said you need to put that thing up you're gonna hook yourself in the face or something with it and that blame I'm like no I won't and next thing I know I hooked myself in the nose <laughs> oh lord and I mean I would hook good <laughs> Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh jeez. I hooked myself good. They finally got that thing out of my nose and it hurt like crap. And he took my fishing lure. I didn't get to keep it no more. <laughs> oh gosh. <laughs> I sure loved my daddy. He was an alcoholic, but I sure loved him. I love my mama, but not like my daddy. Not like my daddy. He, you know, I, I always got upset when people start getting on to him like his brother and sister be getting on to him about his drinking and and uh, George, my brother, get on to him about drinking. My cousins, they'd get on to him about drinking and everything. And I, it used to tick me off that they stayed on him so much. I, I didn't, I guess my line of thinking was, well, he's a grown man and if he wants to drink, he can drink, you know, but I don't know if that was the right way to think about it or not. And he lived with me a couple of times. Um, 
He wasn't living with us when my daddy died, you know, when he committed suicide. Uh, he lived by himself. Uh, but he was only like 54, 55, something like that when he died. And he had been, he had been going almost a year since he'd had a drink. And that day he did himself in, he had went to the liquor store and got him a pint of Steelbrook corn liquor. Drank about half of that. And set it on his bedside table and done himself in. Don't know what he was thinking. Don't know what he was thinking. That's a terrible thing. It's terrible on everybody. Okay. Folks, that's my video for today. That's my story and I'm sticking to it. And I'll see you in the next one. See ya.